Hello guys, welcome and welcome to Meet International Academy. One of the leading academy in training nurses and nursing competitive exam as well as IELTS and LUX and OED training. And welcome to Magic Pill session. So every day we are discussing important MCQs, which is going to be very much useful for you for the upcoming AIMS, NORSET and JIGMAR examination. And today also we are going to start with the uh, MCQ series. So whatever the MCQ, whatever we are discussing, you know, it is taken from previous year question paper only. So definitely it will be so much useful for you for the upcoming examination. So wherever I have highlighted and I'm saying it is very, very important, please make a note of it. Okay. And uh, please subscribe the channel so that it will create motivation for us to post more and more videos. And if you like the video, please the, like it and share to others also so that it will be useful for others. So let's begin the session without wasting the time. So today we are going to discuss about uh, uh, psychiatry questions. The first important question is important daily nursing care of bipolar mood disorder patient taking regular lithium therapy is. So Usually, I used to say that the key points are very, very important. The key points are very, very focused on the question. So, the key point is easy to solve. So, in this question, the key point is the daily nursing care of bipolar mood disorder patient taking regular lithium therapy. So, bipolar mood disorder is there and the patient is taking regular lithium therapy. These are all the two key points. Okay, fine. Let's see the options. So what are the options? Four options they have given here. So among these four options, where as a nurse we need to focus? So this is the question. Okay. So four options, collection of urine specimen, collection of sputum specimen, collection of blood sample, collection of gastric juice. So four options are given here. Among this, any guessings? The right answer is option A, that is collection of urine specimen. Collection of what? Urine specimen. Okay. Fine. So why I have selected this option? You might be asking one question, sir. Usually you will be seeing the serum blood lithium level. Obviously, we will be seeing the serum blood lithium level. That option is also there. That is collection of blood sample. That option C option is there. But the priority one is collection of urine specimen. The rationale behind this is, you know, the lithium, it is excreting out through the kidney only. So we need to check for the kidney function test. If the kidney functioning well, then only the lithium can excrete out. Otherwise, it will damage. The lithium will uh, deposit or accumulate within the body and the serum lithium level will again increase. So on the whole, the priority where it is going, kidney. So that's why we have to check for what? The collection of urine specimen. We have to check the function test. Okay, fine. So... The same thing I have mentioned here also in the rational. You can just go through it. See here, if the patient is admitted and uh, the patient is having the diagnosis of bipolar mood disorder and regular lithium therapy is already going on, then you first you have to ask for the history. Okay. And next, ECG you have to check. Why we need to check for the ECG? See, whatever we are discussing, we have to discuss in depth, right? So ECG we have to check. So why we have to monitor the ECG? What changes you can expect from the ECG? You can expect sinoatrial block. Okay, it is one of the side effect of what? Lithium therapy, okay? Apart from that collection of blood sample, collection of urine specimen, all these things has to be done, okay? Fine. So it is important to assess the renal function test as a renal side effects are very, very common because it is excreted through the urine. The lithium is excreted through the urine. That's why we have to check for the renal function test. Okay. So it is dangerous in the patient with compromised renal function. Okay. The already uh, the patient doesn't know that the patient is having compromised renal, uh, compromised kidney. So that time the patient is taking the lithium medicines means again, it will cause further damage to the kidney. Okay, so on the whole, by keeping all these things in mind, so what is the right answer here? Collection of urine specimen. Okay, fine. So the next one is, uh, yeah, lithium serum level. Very commonly asked question in the exams, guys. So the therapeutic serum lithium level is 0 0.6 to 1.2 milli equals per liter. Okay, so this question frequently asked in the examinations. The next one is, Mono, it is this question is related to mono amino oxidase inhibitor. M A O I means what? Mono amino oxidase inhibitor. Okay, fine. So let's see the uh, question. The client receiving mono amino oxidase inhibitor and is instructed by the nurse about the dietary restrictions. Very simple, direct question. 
the first key point is the patient is taking mono amino oxidase inhibitor inhibitor and what dietary restrictions has to be done so already it is mentioned in the question itself uh, tyramine rich food has to be avoided which food has to be avoided tyramine rich food has to be avoided so all these three key points already mentioned in the question okay so once again i will repeat the question the client receiving the mono amino oxidase inhibitor agent is instructed by the nurse about the dietary restriction for food high in tyramine to prevent the which side effect so what they are asking is if the patient is taking tyramine rich foods also the patient is taking mono amino oxidase inhibitor what kind of side effect you can expect as a nurse so this is the question okay so four options they have given here gi upset hypertensive crisis neuromuscular effect and urinary retention so what will be the answer any guessings guys fine so here the right answer is what option b that is hypertensive crisis as you all know hypertensive crisis there are different type of hyper classification in hypertension so now we are going to focus on the crisis that is hypertensive crisis see more than 180 systolic blood pressure and more than 110 diastolic blood pressure is that means that is more than 180 by 110 mm of mercury blood pressure is there means it is called as what hypertensive crisis if the patient is taking mono amino oxidase inhibitor apart along with that along with that the patient is also taking tyramine rich foods so that time there is a chance for what hypertensive crisis that is more than 180 by 110 mm of mercury blood pressure is going to be there okay so same thing i have mentioned in the rational also so eating food high in tyramine while taking moe M A O I can cause what hypertensive crisis, which is characterized by severe hypertension. I have mentioned the values in mm of mercury. Apart from that, occipital headache. Okay, occipital headache in the backside, severe headache will be there. That is the most common sign. Okay. Apart from that, knuckle rigidity, fever, sweating, chest pain, palpitation, tachycardia, or sometimes bradycardia. Anything can happen. Okay. So on the whole, which is the correct answer here? Option B. That is hypertensive crisis. the third question is again it is related to what mono amino oxidase inhibitor the second question and third question are interconnected with each other so listen carefully okay fine so mono amino oxidase inhibitor is prescribed what should the nurse teach the client to avoid obviously you know the answer tyramine rich food has to be avoided if in the option they are mentioning tyramine rich food nothing to worry about that you can go with that but if they are asking the examples if they are giving the examples of tyramine rich food that time you will get confused so you should know the examples of tyramine rich foods also okay so that is what we are going to see now so four options they have mentioned prolonged exposure to sun ingestion of wines and aged cheese engage in active physical activity over the counter medications like nsaid among this the right answer is option b that is ingesting wine and aged cheese so this is the right answer why we selected this option the rational is so that is what i mentioned here in the question directly asked that mo maoi that is mono amino oxidase inhibitor the patient is taking what they have to avoid so tyramine rich food has to be avoided this is very easy answer but if they are asking in exam uh, asking the examples of tyramine rich foods like what they are asked now in the option b that is an example of tyramine rich food right so in that case you should not get confused so now what you supposed to know is you have to know the examples of tyramine rich food this is what i want to say so here you can see the examples of tyramine rich foods that is beef chicken i have highlighted everything in the red color so please make a note of it okay pause the video and make a note of it all these things are vital points okay so chicken liver smoke and processed meat fermented foods over ripe foods aged cheese we selected option b because aged cheese is present here wine is also present here caffeine red wine beer yogurt etc all these foods are coming under what tyramine containing food okay these food has to be avoided if they are not avoiding then hypertensive crisis will take place it is also called as hyperadrenergic crisis okay guys so this is how they will be asking the question in the exams so the next question is it is related to schizophrenia and the clozapine medication okay fine so let's see the question the client with schizophrenia has been started on medication therapy with clozapine it is an antipsychotic drug the nurse would assess the result of which laboratory study 
to monitor the adverse effect of the medication. First key point, schizophrenia. Second key point, clozapine medication therapy is going on. And as a nurse, what adverse effect of the medication we have to assess in the laboratory study. So three key points. So let's see. LFT, blood glucose level, WBC count, platelet count. This question repeatedly asked in three exams. How many exams? In three exams, they have asked this question repeatedly. Very important question, guys. So here, I have already explained the question. Why Now we have to check for the adverse effect. Okay, Clozap, clozapine drug is taken by the patient and we have to check for the adverse effect. See, if you would have worked in the hospital setup, you would have been known about this. If the patient is taking antipsychotic drug like clozapine for schizophrenia uh, disorder, they are prone for infection. Frequently, the physician used to say that, please check the temperature. Why? What is the reason behind that? See, the clozapine drug, it is adding the tendency to decrease the level of WBC. If the WBC level is decreased, what will happen? The patient is prone for infection. In that case, if the infection is arised, if the patient got the infection, so what is the first way to check whether the person is getting the infection or got the infection by means of checking the temperature. That's why the patient taking clozapine means we have to monitor the temperature every now and then. Okay, because they are prone for infection because WBC count is going to get down. Okay, so this is the rationale behind that. So here, the right answer for this question is option C, that is WBC count. Patient with clozapine, we have to check for the WBC count. Okay, fine. So the rationale already I have given an explanation about the rationale, but still. The baseline WBC and absolute neutrophil count must be taken before starting the treatment of treatment with clozapine. Before starting the clozapine treatment, we have to check for the WBC and neutrophil count. And once the treatment is started, till six months, every week we have to check for the WBC and neutrophil count. Understand that? Because the patient is prone for what? Infection. Okay. And stop the drug if the WBC count drop less than 3000 cells per millimeter cube. You know the normal value of WBC. Fine. So 4000 to 11,000 cells per millimeter cube. But here, if the WBC count is dropped less than 3000 cells per millimeter cube, then immediately we have to stop the drug was fine. Okay. So the next question is the client is on haloperidol. Okay. This is also a very common question asked so many times in the exam. The patient is on haloperidol antipsychotic drug. Okay. If the patient is taking haloperidol means immediately what should come into your mind? Extra parental symptoms. Okay. Fine. So let's see the question. The first key point is haloperidol is taken by the patient. The patient is also having pin rolling movement, uh, tremors, muscle rigidity, all these manifestations are present. Because of taking haloperidol, underline the word, because of taking haloperidol, these manifestations are there. Actually, these manifestations are the symptoms of what? Parkinson. Okay. But here, the patient is not having any Parkinson disease. But because the patient is taking haloperidol antipsychotic drug, the patient is developing this kind of disorder. Okay. So now, let's see the options. Tardive dyskinesia, akinesia, pseudo Parkinsonism, dystonia. So these are all the options. So among these, the right answer is what? Option C, that is pseudo-Parkinsonism. So why I selected pseudo-Parkinsonism as an option? As I mentioned already, the patient is not having, having Parkinson disease. Okay. The patient is having some psychiatric disorder and for treating the psychiatric disorder, for example, we can take a bipolar disorder. Okay. And uh, or otherwise a schizophrenic disorder. The patient is suffering with a psychiatric disorder immediately. He is taking what? Haloperidol as per the doctor's instruction. So he is developing some extra pyramidal symptoms like pin rolling movement, tremors, muscle rigidity, even tardive dyskinesia, akinesia, dystonia, whatever the options they have mentioned here. That is also because of what? Tablet haloperidol, antipsychotic drugs, extra pyramidal signs and symptoms. Okay, so on the whole, because of the medication or because of the treatment, if the patient is developing these things means, then it is called as what? Pseudo-Parkinsonism. That's why we selected option C, that is pseudo-Parkinsonism. Okay, so the rational, whatever I have mentioned, it is clearly mentioned here also. Apart from those signs and symptoms I have mentioned, few more is also there, that is mask-like face, shuffling gait, these 
characteristics also will be present in pseudo parkinsonism okay fine actually you know this alloperidol type of drugs anti psychotic drugs they are a uh, dopamine antagonist 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 means the secretion of dopamine secretions will be blocked by this type of drugs the dopamine secretion will be blocked because of this type of drugs so that time this kind of manifestation will get developed okay so if they are developing uh, this kind of manifestation because of this type of drugs it is called as pseudo parkinsonism that's all okay guys fine so uh, for a little bit uh, explanation so i have mentioned about target dyskinesia akinesia dystonia also because every time we used to discuss each and every option okay for your better understanding right fine so with the image i am going to explain now so target dyskinesia it is also a extra pyramidal uh, symptoms when the patient is taking the uh, medications like haloperidol they will be developing the target dyskinesia so what will happen here you can see i have mentioned very clearly here uh eye blinking grimacing stick out of tongue wave arms without any meaning the patient will be waving arms like this jerking hand and leg movement suddenly like this jerking movement will be present neck twisting okay and the pursing of the lips you can see the lips here okay twisting and pursing of the lips all these things will be present for the patient this is called as what tort dive dyskinesia uh, it is a movement disorder okay long time the patient is taking the medications antipsychotic medications like haloperidol means this type of problems will be developed because the antipsychotic medications are blocking the dopamine in the brain the next symptom is akinesia see <clears throat> very simple one it is also extra pyramidal behavioral side effect of antipsychotic medication akinesia refers to the inability of the voluntary movement the patient wants to perform some movement but they can't do the movement okay inability to perform the voluntary movement because the muscles and limbs are not moving at all okay so that is what i have mentioned here it is mentioned very clearly here i have highlighted in the red color also please make a note of it akinesia refers to the inability to the voluntary voluntarily move one muscles or limbs the patient cannot move the muscles or the limbs because it is stopped the last one is dystonia you can see the image here this is called as what dystonia it is also the movement disorder see the dopamine is responsible for movement here the movement is blocked because the dopamine is blocked because of the antipsychotic drugs that's all this is how you have to keep in your mind okay so dystonia it is a movement disorder that causes the muscle to contract you can see the abnormal contraction in the body of this patient okay so this is called as what dystonia all these things are what extra pyramidal symptoms commonly seen in the patient who is taking long term long timely the patient is taking uh, medications and psychotic medication this manifestations are very common okay guys hope everyone understand the concept whatever i have explained if you have any doubts anywhere please drop your message in the chat box see every day we are uh, dropping five questions for making you to understand better i want everyone to watch the video but only few members are watching the video others are not watching it see this is like a brain booster okay so we are explaining we are spending the time and we are explaining each and everything to you why because you have to clear the exam in the first attempt that is the main motto for us to explaining each and everything for you guys okay so spend at least uh, 15 to 20 minutes while you are traveling in the bus while you are going for the uh, duty or while you are brushing your teeth or taking breakfast so that time please utilize those time for watching this the videos and please share to others also tell others also who have applied for the exams okay so that it will be useful for each and every one so thank you very much for watching the videos guys if you have any doubts anywhere please drop your message in the chat box and all the best for your upcoming examinations